My name is Agron Coma, and I swapped a Crash RS3 in my Golf R. I wanted an RS3. I saw a Golf R and how good it could look. Why not have the Golf R sound as good as it looked and just kick ass? Spectrum uh, it started in Canada and the Spectrum program is pretty much just a color package where you could pick out of 40 heritage colors in the US. Canada I believe they had more colors or whatever maybe. I bought the Crash R3 donor before I bought this car so yeah the intention <laughs> from the beginning was, was to swap this car. Obviously I knew it would have worked because I've seen Europeans do it so I've seen people in Germany, Finland, wherever do this swap already. The problem is, is there's no diagrams online, no nothing. I looked into what could swap, swap into a Golf R and I really wanted an R3 anyway, so that was just off the jump what I really wanted. Yeah, so the problem is there's no wiring diagrams anywhere. Shops are gatekeeping, they don't want to share information. To figure it out is very tough, you know what I mean? Luckily I've had some few friends that gave me some pointers of where I have to look, what I have to do. And then I have a friend who luckily I'm not going to share the name because I don't want Volkswagen to fire them, but to allow access to the wiring diagrams for Volkswagen and Audi. You know what I mean? I didn't do it at a shop. I did it on jack stands in my crappily lit garage at home. So if I can do it, then yeah, uh, any Joe Schmo who's into cars and wants to learn how to read wiring diagrams and figure stuff out, yeah, no, it's plenty possible. Right now, probably on pump gas, probably in the mid to high fives on the 85, should probably touch anywhere between 630, 640 wheel, stock motor. The goal eventually is like 1100, 1200 wheel horsepower. Just just like absolutely go ball to the wall on the on the motor. Uh, luckily it's got an RS3 rear diff, so it'll handle it. <laughs> Full RS3, so anything bolted onto a subframe came out of an RS3. So engine, trans, rear diff, and then obviously the RS3 drive shaft, axles, brakes, oh, fuel wow, so tank. The whole powertrain in this car is RS3. I robbed the donor car <laughs> of everything. It was a shell when I was done. You you have to. That's why, I, that's why I tell people don't buy piece for piece because it's going to cost you an arm and a leg. That's why it's best to do the swap with a donor car in mind. To piece together the parts, to say buy the engine, transmission, harness, accessories. If you pay 20 grand for the crash car, the swap only costs you 20 grand without selling anything off if you do everything yourself. There are some challenges like the frame rail on the passenger side, the RS3 has a service hole, this doesn't. So small weird things like that, I had to figure out. But ideally, because they, Volkswagen and Audi share the same chassis, it's an MQB chassis in the end of the day, so for the most part, it bolts right up. Weird stuff like AC lines that go from the firewall to the front of the engine have to be RS3 because the, the turbo elbow uh, hits the Golf R1 and it's tighter on the RS3, so that has to be RS3. Weird things like that, the transmission on a Golf R is plugged in through the body harness while on the RS3 is plugged in through the engine harness. So if you're plugging in the engine harness, that means that part of the body harness has to get removed completely and then rewired to connect to the actual engine harness. So completely different connectors. Some, some stuff had to get removed completely. The simple way to do it would just pull the whole harness out of the RS3, pretty much just mat it inside the car and swap it and have the RS3 cluster and all that other stuff. It would recognize as an RS3, not a Golf R. So I kept Golf R cluster, kept, pretty much kept everything stock Golf R inside of the firewall back. I just want to retain the car to be a Golf R. So I wanted, if you plug in VCDS, Otis, any computer to it, it recognizes as a Golf R. Because it's street legal. So I could register it, I can do emissions. Because the car's an MQB, and obviously this is an RS3 intake, uh, all I had to do was on the core support, shave on the ears here and there to get it to sit farther in to fit in the car. No, everything, everything is OEM. So even the fuse block is OEM Golf R, just completely modified with a bunch of the RS3 fuel, uh, fuse block. So literally just Frankenstein two fuse blocks to make one. Everything. I want no lights on the dash. I want everything to communicate. I want it to work uh, just like how it would be when I bought it from the factory and just, I want OEM. Pretty much it's exterior wise, 
It's as OEM plus as you can go. And I have Euro tail lights, full Unger kit, Spectrum. How much better can you get? You know what I mean? A massive Yeah, R3 intercooler, yeah. It fills, it fills the whole space up. That was fun try, trying to get that thing to fit right because the core support off a of Golf R is not the same as an RS3. Obviously you need the RS3 intercooler, the RS3, uh, a custom intercooler could work also, but radiator, core support, all that stuff, ideally you want to get from an RS3. So they're not the same, so I had to do some customization to make work, but intercooler is not crooked, the lines are straight, so I'm happy. With my business, I work six days a week. So I only have Sundays to tackle this car. So some, done, some Sundays I couldn't work on it, some Sundays I could, because I mean, I guess it's like riding a bike because I've done it in the past. I just hate wiring, it's my least favorite thing in the world. So I was able to figure it out, you know what I mean? Use a little bit of common sense of what needed to be done, how it needed to be done. Found the wiring diagrams between both vehicles, matched from one to the other, said, oh, this sensor on a Golf R is on this pin, but on the RS3, shares the same sensor, it's on this pin. So figuring it out, nightmare. And then when I did figure it out, I cried. I literally, like when the car started, I literally cried. Um, Cause it's like, holy crap, I did this and it didn't catch on fire. So, so it worked. I had issues to where I had someone Immo defeat it originally and they re it reset all my long coding. So my car couldn't go past 1500 RPM. I couldn't, I couldn't go more than like five miles an hour in the car. So I was so distraught, I was like, and I gave up for a few months. I literally didn't touch the car for, for like, I think like a month and a half or two months, just because that's all it did. And you know what I mean? Where, where you're at a point to where I was like, I give up. Cause I only have Sundays to work on it. But luckily someone pinpointed me to a guy, uh, Vic. He literally remoted in and within 15 minutes, my car was literally running. Plugged in the, the charge pipes, w uh, went around the block, building boost, car drove perfect. It was all a long coding issue for a couple months. But yeah, no, I literally felt defeated for for a few months not wanting to do anything with it. First event was Euro Tripper down in Florida. The person who actually runs the show is the person I bought the car from, Paul Barney. So I actually, that's why I nicknamed the car Barney because uh, he wanted to see the car obviously and might as well debut my car at his event. But no, I, I love to drive the car. I drove it to Euro Tripper, obviously South Florida. I drove it to Wookiees in the Woods. I mean, I drove it here. I'll drive it to events. If you see how I built it, and if you saw the garage I built it in, I mean, jack stands, lawnmower equipment on one side, <laughs> toolbox on the other side, like it was the worst type of envi environment to do it. And it was difficult. Like the suffering fell on me like four or five times and <laughs> it hurt. Uh, <laughs> I think that's like, yeah, it was tough, it was challenging. Plenty of times where I felt like I wanted to give up just because of like all the challenges I faced with it. But at the end of the day, the most rewarding thing I could have ever done.